Hi, I'm Matt, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use your spectroscope to actually analyze the spectra of different elements. So in the last video we built our spectroscope, um, and we talked about the fact that you want this slit at the front really, really thin and defined. Um, and there's a few different things I, I need to mention about that. If you make your slit too wide, you can actually fix it like I have with this one here and just get a, another piece of paper and paste that over, so tape that over the top just so you've got a really nice defined slit there. If the slit you've cut is already quite nice and thin and defined, now you can actually use your spectroscope. So another thing I'm going to mention is instead of building your spectroscope out of normal paper, um, which is 80 GSM, 80 grams per square meter, what we want to do is maybe bump that up to about 120. And it just means that when you make the box, it's a bit more um, sturdy. So what I have here is a high voltage setup with a neon gas discharge tube. And you can see that that discharge tube is vertical. The first thing you want to do is just make sure you can actually use your spectroscope with your naked eye. And you actually want to put this slit in the same plane or orientation as the discharge tube. So you can see that the slit is horizontal there, but my light source is vertical. What I'm going to do now is turn my spectroscope so that it's in the same plane as the actual source and that's working quite well. I can easily see some lovely first order and if I look for it, I can also see second order diffraction lines there. Uh, and that's a really important test to see if your spectroscope's working, so definitely use it. And then we can move on to the next part, which is using your spectroscope with your mobile phone to actually take some photos of some spectra. So the first thing you wanna do here is actually take your phone out of whatever case it's in. Um, my phone's always in a case, so I've just taken it out there. Just place it on the table in front of you there, and you actually want to sticky tape your spectroscope to your phone. So now that we've got our spectroscope built and it's got that nice, really defined slit in the front of it there, um, we can actually attach this to our phone here. So what I like to do is just have your phone on the bench there and just get some sticky tape ready. I'm just gonna use three pieces. So we want the spectroscope positioned so that the diffraction grating, all of it is sitting, as you can see there, the, the rainbow color there. So the diffraction grating is sitting directly over the actual camera lens there. So I'm just gonna put my phone there and I'm just gonna pre-apply the sticky tape. Now you won't know if you've done this correctly until you actually use the camera on your phone. Okay, so I've got my sticky tape there on my spectroscope and what I'm going to do now is just line up my phone. And you, you don't wanna put this on a strange angle, you sort of wanna line it up with the phone and just make sure it's all square. Then once you think you've got it square, just apply a force with your fingers there. So now you can see that I've got my smartphone with the spectroscope attached and it juts out there at a bit of an angle, which is perfectly fine. And we're going to use that to analyze the spectra of various gases now. So when you first attach your spectroscope to your phone and open up the camera, you'll notice that you can actually see the slit and then below it you'll see some um, bit of an emission spectra there. So this is just from the ambient light in the room and it depends on what type of light you have in the room as to the spectra you see. But what I'm going to do now is actually show you on the phone how you go through the settings so that you can take the best photo of spectra possible. So as you can see, I've just opened up my camera on my phone. And before you start taking photos of spectra, you wanna go from the photo mode, past selective focus, to the pro mode here. 
So on the right hand side of my screen, you can see the white balance. I'm just gonna leave that on auto. The next thing is the focus, and I'm gonna put that on manual focus. Most of the time, that'll be set to auto. And if you just move your slider there, you can change it to manual focus. This one here is your color levels, and we actually don't wanna to touch that. We're just gonna leave that as it is. This one here is your exposure time or your shutter speed. So you can see I've got that on 0.3 seconds there. You actually wanna push that as high as possible. Um, without overexposing the photo, and I've found 0.3 seconds works quite well. And the bottom here, one here is ISO, so that's how much gain you have on your photo to overexpose it or underexpose it. So normally when your phone is on auto mode, it automatically adjusts the exposure time and the ISO for any exposure. Whereas now we're setting it to manual so we can take some good photos of Spectra. So I've just turned on my discharge tube there, and as I line up my spectroscope with the discharge tube you can see I'm getting some nice spectra there I'm getting both first order and second order diffraction my first order diffraction and I'm just using the pinch zoom function on my phone they look a little bit overexposed so I can go from 0 0.3 maybe down a little bit to an eighth of a second and take a photo, or I can zoom out and really concentrate on trying to get both the first order and the second order diffraction. So if I just go from an eighth of a second back up to a third of a second, once again just want to play with that focus. Just taking lots of photos, um, fingers crossed, hopefully one of them is the photo. Once again, we can actually zoom in and just focus on taking a photo of that first order diffraction. So one sixtieth of a second, one sixtieth of a second is underexposed. Let's go one fifteenth. It's looking pretty good. We might go a little bit more. One sixth. There we go. Just playing around with that focus there. Zooming out once again, looking for that second order diffraction. Excellent. On my phone, and once again, just sort through them and zoom in, pinch zoom on your phone, and actually you can screenshot them. So that one there looks really nice like that. And I'm just gonna screenshot that. Zooming in still, you can see those nice green bands there, the green emission lines, and the second order diffraction lines coming in as well. Then if I just focus on the diffraction lines of the first order, the emission lines, sorry, um, you can see them there quite nicely. So that's the emission spectra of neon. Hopefully this has really helped you sort of understand how to take a good photo of spectra. Um, taking lots of photos definitely does help. And so you can see that if I just screenshot that, that there like that, that's a pretty nice image of the emission spectra of neon. Um, some photos that I took earlier were these ones here. That's quite a nice one. I've, I've got both first order and second order, but you can see it's a little bit faint and I can't detect those green emission lines. So that one there is quite nice. Zooming in, you can see that doublet of the green emission lines there. Um, and then my second order diffraction lines, sorry, um, emission lines weren't in focus there. So good luck taking photos through your spectroscope. Um, Make sure you try and use that manual mode. If you don't have a manual mode on your phone, you might want to Google it, see if there's a third-party app you can download. Um, just looking through these images here, I reckon 
I reckon this one back here, that's probably the one I'm most happy with. All right, so you've got some nice solid emission lines as well as you can see the neon on the far left-hand side there. Zooming out, I do have my second order diffraction that was happening. So you can see when these lines are a bit too fat, that's actually due to the fact that the photo was not in focus and that one there is a lot better.